republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again. It is Saturday evening, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And joining me this evening is Mr. Mr. Mark. I'm back. We're going to call you. We, we need a nickname for you. Uh, it's nothing Cajun. Gun Not, ca- nothing against Cajun. We're going to uh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna call you the gunslinger. Okay, gunslinger. I'll do gunslinger, it. Mark. Mark the sure. gunslinger. Because yeah. you sling guns across the counter yeah. all day long. Yep. Just slinging guns everywhere. So, hey, <laughs> hello, Kelly. Hey, Phil. Man, we, wow, wow, look at that. Here we go. We're coming alive. Coming Look alive. at that. I need to put that hour warning. I don't know if there's a warning. I put an hour <laughs> thing up on Facebook yeah. about an hour ago. I said we're going to go live. It's I don't a, know if that was a, threat. a hint, a warning, <laughs> a threat. I'm not an invite. I don't know. But how have you been, sir? Been good. Um, I missed last week's podcast. I, I, pretty sure i was available but i didn't know you guys were doing it on monday so or whenever it came out whenever it was it was sunday Sunday. it was last minute i thought you were probably working i apologize yeah that's all right don't be mad at me you're fine don't be mad no it was a good one i liked it i like last week's i should have it was so like last minute tarver's like hey by the way uh i'm not i'm available um you guys were tired the previous day so oh my gosh we tried the previous day and it just fell apart Hey, Tyler. Tyler joined us on Facebook Live. Yeah, it just fell apart. We were, it was bad, man. It was rough. We were just kind of like stumbling around with our words. Mm -hmm. And we were almost through the whole podcast. And finally, we're like, I look over at Tarver and he's like, cut it, cut it. We're done. And he reached over and he goes, boop. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like okay well i guess we didn't have a choice yeah. no it was it was it was pretty ugly we have those occasionally but the comeback that was that was a good one I it was it. a breakthrough it was yeah. a it's right we came back we came back at it hard yeah so you've been working a lot sir um yeah i mean you know throughout the through all the heat and stuff it's nice sometimes being in i don't know how you're working so hard because there's no ammo or guns to sell well, you know, we're, they're trickling in a little bit here and there. We're, they are. We're definitely pumping out more guns than, than we're getting in. Um, but, yeah, and then this, the Knicks crashed yesterday, so. Oh, did it? Yeah. Is it because it was over being overused or I what? I don't know. I think it might have been drunk or something. I'm not sure. So, but, tell, <laughs> so tell me. And we talked, uh, you know, me and Tarver, you listen to the podcast. We talked about ammo um, right. last week, and we talked about. Is there really a shortage shortage or is this being bought up quickly? What about so, firearms? I mean, go ahead and talk okay, about so ammo too. With, with ammo, I, I, I don't know. This is my sources, uh, Guns and Ammo Magazine. Um, Top secret. That, that there is a, Top a shortage on some primers. Okay. So primers is what I'm understanding is the main issue. Um, you know, is what's, what, what's causing the shortage. But right. I'm sure just from what I've seen with the, um, the amount of orders that we have in for, for – um, ammunition um it's getting to the point where some of the orders are not being filled and so they are therefore canceling the orders because they know they're not going to be able to fill them um if that makes any sense so we've just kind of reached the point where it's not necessarily demand they just can't they just yeah and it's not so where's everything we're not canceling it it's the it's the manufacturers and the distributors and where's stuff like everything that. going that they're making right so they're making they can't get components right well yeah so where are all the components going I, I don't know. I mean, it's not like they're not making them. I just think maybe it's a domino effect. I'm, I'm almost sure of it that one one component gets, you know, shorted. Right. And then it just domino snowballs from there. So, but where's, I mean, I, I hear they're working overtime at, at CCI making um, these primers. Yeah, where are the freaking, uh, they're all working. Where are they going? I don't know. Who's getting these primers? Um. Yeah. I mean, that's my question. Well, I know federal has like a military contract, but I don't think that they're taking that much of it. So that's like, but don't they normally buy like yeah, one bulk buy and it's done? Well, you would think so. But like, like our orders are huge orders, but the f- what we're getting in is right. little bits of that order. We're not getting all that order at once. The fascists are stealing our primers. Maybe. Yeah. Over there in wherever... Portlandia or wherever they're yeah, from. Portlandia. 
some warehouse of primer somewhere. Yeah. Tell you what, it's it hasn't quite affected my reloading yet, but uh, it's getting close. I mean, I'm looking up, trying to figure out what other primers I can use to load nine millimeter with. And uh, some two hundred nine primers or something. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing. Uh, I think you know. Well, anyhow, I'll let people research that themselves. I'm not going to recommend anything that might be unsafe because the places I go online to look up reloading stuff, there's some pretty shady areas. Okay, I don't no. recommend. I don't recommend that anybody. That anybody reloads like me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm like, you know, I reload some and then I call my buddies to come over and say, hey, I got some uh, yeah, free and ammo. And come shoot. Them. You come, trick them. You throw this. Uh, here, shoot this. It Come shoot. I'll supply and the I'm ammo. I'm shooting it up and you're like, hey, that you just shot my reloads. I'm like, I did what? Yeah. And I'm like, sweet. It works. I'll have to, now, which one was that? Was that the red <laughs> one or the blue one? Because I'm used to, you know, two different primers in there and a little different powder. And I going to start reloading nines with black powder here pretty soon. Oh, you never know. It may be the new thing. It, it, might, ha- <laughs> it might have to be. Or it may not be. It might. Speaking of that, uh, tomorrow I need to go hit my I got a little secret spot. I got a little secret spot I go to. For what? For reloading components. Oh, well, don't worry about it. You can tell me afterwards because I don't reload. I, I'm, I'm not on trust you. Okay. Got secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> we have square and blood. Yeah. Okay. But I got I found I found out some other ways that some other reloading supplies that I can use as uh, for nine millimeter. They don't really say that you can use for nine millimeters. So I'm gonna go grab them. I know where a whole bunch of them are. What so, are you gonna just try out something or? No, I uh, I did a little research. People aren't okay. missed. People right. they're not posting fix, pictures of missing fingers or anything. So I think we're good. That's a. Well, that's a good sign, I guess. But Unless it was the finger they used to click the little camera button. Click. That could be. I don't know. I'll report back to you midweek. You shoot your, <laughs> yeah. You shot your finger T- off. Todd's new class. You've got a, <laughs> he, he teaches you how to fire handguns with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> or nubbins. One of the, one of the two. Uh, oh, well, shoot. Well, people are shooting themselves anyway, so. Oh, they are. They are. So, do you, <laughs> So there's so I guess I posted a story on Patriot Defense about we're gonna get just gonna get right into it. This is gonna be okay. this this yeah. right now, my friend. We'll let's come go. we're gonna come back to you. This takes priority. Take, let's no offense, it. Mark. This takes priority. There is there's a story that came out. There is a Facebook page which no longer exists because I can't find it. And if someone has a link to it, I want to join this page because it would uh leave plenty of uh podcast uh, material, let's say. There is a, I guess what they, these guys do for jollies is they take a gun. <laughs> That's a poor choice of words. <laughs> I know, but it, it's what they do. They take a gun and I think they load said firearm. Uh huh. And they point it at their wieners. Is it just one round that they load? Just I don't, I don't know. Or maybe, you know. But they point this loading and they videotape it and take pictures of it and they post it on Facebook. And people enjoy this. Look, we've already lost listeners. This is people aren't liking this. Okay, we, we've lost views. But they're pointing this thing at their wieners, right? So this guy did this with a 1911, a 45 1911, live on Facebook Live, mind you. Okay, we're and, on Facebook Live right now. Yeah, he went on Facebook Live, and he ended up, I don't know, I guess not obeying the safety rules. Uh, by pointing the gun at his junk and then touching the trigger. Guess what went bang? Everything. Well, I'm, sh- I'm sure, yeah. Everything. Sure stuff that should The dude bang. shot himself, shot himself in the junk on Facebook Live. Wow. 15 seconds of fame. With a 45 and then jumps on Facebook and starts Facebook posting about it. What, like? Where the hole, or, where the entrance just was, don't where do the, this because I the, just did it, where the exit was. <laughs> I don't understand people. I, I just don't understand. Right. I don't. I mean, you're not on that Facebook page, are you? Uh, not well. Yeah, no, I am not that one, not his, but I am yours. Okay, okay. that's good. Okay. Yeah. So don't do that. Let's not be stupid, right? I mean, come on, people. I mean. Boy, that's uh, people will get mad at me. They 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 call me crazy for appendix carrying, but I don't go around and like this guy like. But you don't have your you don't touch your finger on it. This, I, mean, I mean, this guy like pointed it, like put it on his junk. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and then pulled the trigger. 
<laughs> you can't say whoops on that one. So I'm sorry. Just go find. Hopefully the video is still up. I just looked up the article again, and it looks like they might have pulled the video. So you may have missed it, but go see. Maybe it's still up there. Who knows? Maybe it was my internet or something. But you need to go check it out. That the video is just the, the video's nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's a good choice of words. <laughs> the video is nuts. So Philip says is that's his wife's biggest fear with uh, him carrying appendix. If you do it safely, right, if you obey the safety rules, you're good to go. It's either a hole through your nuts or a hole through your butt cheek. Figure it out. Nuts and butts. I don't know. I okay, just, that's I, it. I, I, that, I, that my friend is a whole different website. Okay, yeah. We're not. We don't need to go. No, we don't go there. Okay. <laughs> it just popped. It just. Sorry. Okay, so let's get back to teenage let's get, brain. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the schedule here. Okay, the way we do things. Okay. So Upside what's happened down and backwards? No. <laughs> <laughs> what's happened? At, what's happened at the store? Anything exciting? Uh, well, I mean, I'm just getting bombarded with a lot of the where's the ammo questions. When are you getting it in? We don't know. I mean, we're trying the best we can. Right. We're, we're getting everything we can. Um, the you know this is one of the uh, I've been missing a few episodes so. We're going back to the thoughts from behind the gun counter. Yeah, we can do that. Um, thoughts from behind the gun counter. Something that just happened today. Um, do you have people licking guns again? No, not nearly that bad. Well, I mean, it's pretty bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> um, so this happened just today. So no names. I don't obviously don't know her name. So, But she comes in looking for a gun. We don't use names in this podcast having, anyway. <laughs> having just uh, apparently just taken a uh, class from a... Not from me competitive uh yeah for people i advise against yeah so yeah competing or competing uh organization that does classes we won't name that because it's made up of a bunch of prosecutors and attorneys so we don't okay that almost gives it away yeah well I, anyway we're not cool, naming though. it we're though. not naming it though. The, the, you know you can go wild so anyway here's what happens she tells us this she says that she just took the class um, she's and nothing against Trump, but she's got this Trump hat on and she's just she's, ready to go. She's ready to go. She wants to buy a gun. She's looking at guns. Um, but her way of looking at guns is, uh, and I wasn't helping her. Jeremy was helping her, but, um, so he's handing her these different ones. She's trying them out by, by pointing them, you know, at me. I don't think she's really knowing what she's doing in the first right. place. She's not paying attention to her, you know, where her barrel's pointing um, which she should be if she just took the class. That should be like a priority, right? right. You, you think, think right? so, yeah, yeah. So, but no, she's not only pointing him at me, but she's trying out the trigger on him. Well, maybe she wanted to see what it looked like to actually point the gun at someone, Mark. And yeah, you're maybe. you're a guy behind the gun counter. Aren't you okay with that? I'm a bad guy, apparently. Aren't you okay with that? No, huh. I mean, I never have been okay. So with she that. pointed at you and squeezed that she was dry firing this thing, right? Yeah, and I, I tell I say that I'm used to it by now, by getting you know getting guns pointed at me. But you're never used to it. So when that it's, happens, it's not, it's not a thing. What are you guys allowed to do, or what do you do? Do you just go with it? Do you I just move? Moved. Do you say anything to her? I didn't say anything. It's like you don't want to upset her because she's a right. customer. I guess she's I can trying, see she, that. She's, I, I don't think if she did take the class, I don't think she used her own gun because she's looking for a new. A, a, she seemed like a first time buyer to me. Right. Right. Very not. Knowing what what's going on, she's sure. not paying attention. Gotcha. Um, you know, and so I just I moved. I walked to the other side of Jeremy. So then, Maybe if she said, was gonna, Jeremy, she's all yours. Yeah, if she was going to point the gun, you know, and, and then if she if she followed me over there, then I'd be worried. Then there's, I'd be like, look, this is not cool. There's there's plenty of Jeremys. Just Jeremy, you take this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was he a little freaked out by the whole deal? No. Well, afterwards, he he said something. You know, he's like, boy, she. She's just pointing the gun at you, you know. I'm like, yeah, she's pointed at you too. I'm what, like, did you pissing her Cheerios, dude. I, I'm like, I mean, she was a nice gal. I'm not gonna, right? I'm not gonna bash on her that much. Honestly, it's she just didn't know. Too late. Anyway, um, she just didn't know. She didn't know what she was doing, and it's really surprising to me if she did just take a class. Uh, I'm wondering what they're teaching in that class. I'm just curious. Well, so here's the thing. Sorry, I'm drinking my. I gotta show my camera. Are you? I'm drinking my kombucha. Makes your guts feel high. Oh, I love kombucha. Okay. So, so is it really, I, I don't even want to know if I want to blame her because she, she may not legitimately know. Right. So it's the class that she took. 
So what are they teaching in that class? That's what I'm wondering. You know, what are they teaching in that class? Um, Why aren't you, you know, I I think that when I'm, when I'm teaching a class, I teach, I have a classroom portion of the permit class. Then we go out and we do the shooting portion. There's certain things in the class that I reiterate time and time again, Absolutely. whether we are in the classroom portion and then I will reiterate it when we're out on the range, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. And and I and so one of the things we talk about, like probably a half dozen, if not more, uh, one of the, those things is safety. We talk about firearm safety. We talk about what are the four firearm safety rules, Mark? Yeah. Do you know what they are? Um, yeah, but I, it's not word for word. I'm going to tell you what they are. <laughs> you, you've got it down. This I'm is like, what I, I do. know what not to do, but you're you're yeah, yeah you got it down. So uh, we have. First one, treat every, I don't even know if this is the right order, but they're, I'm just throwing they're them out all, there. It doesn't matter. Treat order. every firearm like it is loaded, even if you know it is unloaded, right? That is mm-hmm. a safety rule. That's really easy rule to teach. We get asked that all the time at the counter, why I'm checking, you know, yeah. making sure it's it's not for your benefit, it's for mine. One is none, two is one. Yeah. Right? Okay. Keep your finger off the trigger. Unless in, unless you're ready to fire the weapon, right. fire the gun. And, let, you know, you can, now we will say you can, you know, run, dry fire, but it needs to be what? Pointed in a safe direction, which also falls back on one of the other rules, which is never point your firearm at anything you're not willing to kill or destroy. And uh, so there you go. And then the last one is always know your target and what is behind, beyond. beyond yeah. So... You know, you look at her and she's obeying one, two. She obey, she's disobeying all, all the rules. That's not obeying, disobeying. Yeah. Yeah. She's breaking them all. So did they even teach her those? Those are really That's, easy I'm to really teach. I'm really skeptical that they did. And if you leave, so I've got people that come to class, my class, right? And they might be new shooters. And they're not going to leave my permit class being freaking John Wick, right? Right. I mean, you might be lucky if you're getting them, you know, you can get them all on a piece of paper, but you may not get them all in it, like even a fist size group. You just... That's not the class for that. But you know what? They're going to leave knowing a couple things. Mm-hmm. They're going to leave knowing the safety rules. They're going to leave knowing how to how the gun works and how it operates, how the slide works, how to rack a slide, that kind of stuff. They're going to leave knowing the shooting fundamentals. And they're going to leave, and this is a simple one, but it's, it's sometimes you just got to get the wind when you can get them. They're going to leave knowing how to load a magazine. <laughs> And I hate to say that, but everyone learns at different rates, right? But come on, you can leave with a handful of items, okay? Yeah. And if that's if, if the only thing you leave with is one is one thing, it should be the freaking safety rules. And why isn't that being taught? I I am teaching the safety. I'm talking about the safety rules on the second, on the third slide of my class. They haven't been in class more than five minutes, yeah. and we go over the firearm safety rules. And then about 10 slides later, we hit it again. Then we hit it again. And then when we go out on the range to shoot, we hit it again. Okay, constantly. Safety rules all the time. So I'm not, I'm not knocking on the lady. I'm knocking on the class she took, or the instructors, the instruction company. Those people need to know the safety rules. Yeah. If she's that, so, I mean, if, they, if, if she's that fresh out of the class, yeah. this should not be happening. So, uh, anything else happened at the store, sir? Oh, it's, it's all one big blur anymore. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it started in what, March and just, it's just been one. Nothing, 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 nothing weird has come in. People asking for weird things. No, I mean, there's a lot of people wanting to know if we can order guns and I'm like, um, well, we've got guns on order and they say, no, like order me again. And I'm, I, I want to just tell them like, I, do you know what's going on right now? Right. So, <laughs> no. So, is, is guns the same thing as ammo right now? Are guns just being bought so quickly that they can't stay on the shelf, yeah. right? Or is it that there's no, there's just no guns out there, and they're trying to manufacture them as quickly as they can to keep up with orders? There is because okay, there's so a difference in my mind. We have five main distributors that we that we pull from, that right? We get stuff from, and I go I go on there every now and then and kind of like cruise through. Uh, I'm looking at stuff, even if we've never carried it before. Right. I'm putting in nine millimeter. I'm putting in 40 caliber. I'm putting in just caliber. You know, I want to see what's available per that caliber. Right. And I'll go down the list. I'll spend, you know, I don't know how many minutes going down that list. And there's nothing. 
There's nothing. So is it like, but, but do, I, you may not know this, but is it because they're not getting it manufactured? Like there's a shortage on iron or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's I, something I like a component to make a firearm I, or are people just buying them that fast? I, I mean. Because you can still buy a firearm and not have to have ammo. The rate we're selling firearms, I wouldn't doubt if people are buying them that quickly. Really? Honestly. I mean. So as soon as they come in, so when you guys get a load of guns in, if they're not already spoken for, so how many, I mean, is like six guns you get in, like eight guns you get in, so or just with, really with random? So with Yeah. Um, we're lucky if we get one or two. A day, a week? Uh, about every three days, probably. And how long do those last when they hit the shelves? Not very long. I mean, we've got a lot of holes in the, yeah. in the drawers. Um, there are a few times where we'll get like one gun and we'll get like, you know, six or seven of that exact gun. But, you know, like, uh, let's say a G3, a Taurus G3. Right. We got some in the other day. How long they last? Uh, maybe a week. Really? And that was, what, maybe six or seven that we got in? Do you got people just coming in and buying onesies, or do you people coming in and buying, like, two and there three? Are, there's, well, just the guy today, I actually called him back um, on his second uh, G3C. <clears throat> really? Yeah. I mean, they're buying them. Do you know his name? I do, yeah. Is it Lee? No. Oh. Okay. Nope. He's going to watch. He's going to watch this. He's going to know why I asked. <laughs> no, it's not. So oh, it, it's just really, I don't know. It's so sporadic on what we get in. And like I said, it's, guns are going out faster than we're getting them in. I mean, long guns, we're getting in some pretty cool long guns right now. and No one's buying the hunting rifles. Well, today we sold quite a few. I was going to say, are they starting to buy hunting they're rifles? They're starting now? to. Because yeah. you, know, you know why they're starting to buy hunting rifles, don't you? It's getting to be. Friday on the radio show, I, I said, hey, look, I think oh, yeah. you can go buy. It's because of me. Uh-huh. I'm going to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So it's locally. It's because of me. I'm going to throw that out there. <laughs> because you can get some of those Savage Axis packages now for three or 400 bucks. Right? Or roundabout. Yeah. So that's cheaper than a handgun. So you can't buy handguns. You can go pick up three or four of these babies. So I think we should. Yeah. They're going to be a run on rifles now. I called this. I called this. <laughs> well, there's definitely. You know what? There is definitely going to be a run on is magazines, high capacity magazines. Oh yes. So big news coming out of California or into Cal. Well, big news coming out of California and big news now being shipped into California. Yep. Yep. They're already shipping them in. So. So the the Ninth Circuit, right? Yes. Uh, went ahead and they um, they knocked down the uh, the magazine the magazine the high cap uh, magazine ban yep. for the state of California and said you people you need to taste a little bit of freedom you need to quit moving to Idaho so we're going to give you a little bit of freedom yeah. down there in California so you can stay there and uh, we're going to let you guys have high capacity magazines yep so, so they're either going to be going to other states to get them. Or they're going to be, there's going to be a run on shovels, so they can dig them up. They're going to dig them up. Yep. Uh, and whatever it takes to remove Cosmoline. Yeah. Yeah. There so, you go. I mean, so is this going to be like it was the other, like, like was it last year where they they came, they 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 legalized them, and then the next day they made them illegal again? Well, I think that's what this was all about. Like the second time oh, was the, gotcha was the appeal to it, and then gotcha. they're like, no, no, we're we're upholding it. That was funny. They all ran out to dig them up, and then two hours later, they were burying them nope. again. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that hole again? So have they actually started shipping in there already? Yeah, it's what I've been reading on, on really? some of the people I follow, like our, the companies that I follow, they're shipping mags in already. So. That did not take long. No, I think they were ready for it. I think they might have had a little inside... You know, knowledge of what was going to happen. Taste so. of freedom. But there's nothing to put in those magazines right now. No. But, you know. But at least they own the magazine. At least magazines. you have a high-capacity magazine. That's right. So if you do have ammo already, good good on you. There you go. There you go. So congratulate. I never thought I'd congratulate nope, California. Nope, don't say it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I never thought I'd congratulate California, but good good on you, right? The gun... The gun uh, Toting people of California. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A little taste of freedom. Right. So it's craziness, man. Isn't, uh, what's, what's her name? Who? The uh, Kamala. Isn't she from California? Oh, or is she, I don't know. I don't know where she's from. Oh, so, uh, can, can, is it Kamala? Camilla? No, I think she wants to be called Kamala or whatever, but no, I'm calling her Kamala. Kamala Harris. Camel toe, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Kamala Harris, great. Kamala Harris is uh, uh, Biden's VP running mate, right? That was the worst selection he could have possibly had. Uh, he didn't make that selection. No. He, well, they flat out said that he was looking for a woman of color. And, I mean, she's, like, Indian or something? I don't know. Yeah. But, anyhow, she's you got to be careful with her. She's come out and said, in fact, you keep chatting about her. I'm going like, to look up a quote. Like red dot Indian, not like, not like. I have got a quote. Okay. And you so, keep yeah, going. I mean, she's, I'm going to look it up. She's full on. Uh, Trump calls her nasty. That's, I mean, of course, he has a vocabulary of, like, eight words. So, <laughs> of like nasty is definitely Of, one like, of them. an eight-year-old. Yeah. So, uh, nasty is definitely one of them. And she is definitely that. I mean, she is... She's just, you know, very, she's like my first grade teacher, you know, like clean your desk. And if you're not cleaning your desk fast enough, she'll just dump it on the floor in front of the whole class. Right. You know, I mean, she's very, Did I don't that know, happen I want to call her a witch. She's a witch. Did that um, happen anyway, to you? My first grade teacher now, I, I, I probably, you know, we've made amends. We're good. But anyway. <laughs> I can't pull it up, but she definitely wants She's to come. She's a gun free. grabber. Yeah, she is. She actually has quoted uh, at one point, I don't on my Wi-Fi, if I, yeah, you know, I'm not going to try because I'm going to mess up the Facebook Live, right? But um, she's actually come out and said that the average person does not have a right to own firearms, concealed yeah. or otherwise. Does not have a abiding citizen. any It doesn't firearms. matter if you have a perfect record, you never had a speeding ticket or nothing. You, you can't have one. What she wants to do is she wants to leave it down to where the elite, the chosen few, the elite, the chosen few get to own firearms, right? They yeah. get to be the exceptions, not us. We're the right. little people. We're the little people. We don't deserve that right or that luxury. Yeah. We deserve to die in the streets like dogs. Something like that. So I mean, that's what, I mean, that's what they'd want to happen to us. Leave our stuff alone, Kamala. That's right. Kamala. <sighs> we're kind of burning through topics you know, pretty fast. You know there, what was dude. funny is, um, who was it? Rod Stewart. You remember that whole thing that happened in Virginia like a while ago where they were, they were kind of like gathering at the courthouse or the, uh, Capitol building. How is this concerned? Rod Stewart. I think it was Rod Stewart that wrote, wrote the song, leave Virginia alone. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm not a big Rod Stewart fan. So I, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, it was a perfect song for them as like Do a rally song. Do you think I'm sexy? No, no, not that song. Uh, no. <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh, I don't know shoot. where I, where I went off on that one, but anyway, no, Kamala Harris, and she doesn't like being called Kamala, so I'm going to continue calling her that. Um, Camelot. Yeah, and it's funny because Biden slipped up, I guess, and called her Kamala. <laughs> she probably freaked out. Oh, she, probably on freaked out. she probably beat him in the back room oh, or yeah, something. I'm sure. Yeah, it's El- like elderly th- abuse. That's freaking elder abuse. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had a class today. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. It was warm. A little bit. It's going to be warmer tomorrow. That's why I got it out of the way today. Yeah. So uh, Patriot Defense is coming. Uh, is 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 the cream is starting to rise to the top, and I've almost got. I've almost we're becoming an elite force to be reckoned with, and I've almost got every awning that I need oh my for my range to make sure people are in the shade. Keep people in the shade. I, I, I do that because I care about my students. Right. You don't want them getting sunburned. Or no. And then when skin the skin cancer and all when that. When the big wind blows, I'm like, quick, grab a leg. <laughs> yeah. Everybody hang on. We're going for a ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, it was a pretty interesting class today. And I have got, oh, let me see here. I didn't get this posted up in time. Okay. Because the class just got over with a couple hours ago. But check this out. The guy that won the bullseye competition was shooting, uh, well, let me bring it in here. I'm freaking old, dude. I'm going to have to buy a red dot. My eyes are. <laughs> do, you need, do you need some readers? Some cheaters? I, you know, I, I might. Uh was shooting a 22. Hey, gosh, what does that say? Okay. Yeah. It's a high standard. Oh, yeah. You Model HD military. Won it. Circa 1945. Wow. I've got an old high standard. Nice. That's what he shot all class today. Yeah. All class. He won the bullseye competition with that. He won the bullseye competition with that 22 from 1945. It was super impressive. In fact, it was funny because he was up there shooting it. And when he when he hit the bullseye with it, right, and I knew he was like he had like won the competition, or pretty sure, right? Uh-huh. No one else was was actually hitting the bullseye. Um, I asked him, I said, so 
That's pretty phenomenal. Is that the same gun that your grandpa used when he uh, rode his horse to warn that the Redcoats were coming? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Redcoats are coming. The Redcoats are coming. Wow. The British is coming. Yeah. Anyhow, that was kind of funny. I, th- I thought it was funny. The rest of the class thought it was funny. They all he probably just, looked at you like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, he just kind of looked at me. You can't say that. Yeah, I can say what I freaking want to say. <laughs> it's my class, right? Make it or break it. It's all, it's all about me. So, um. Uh, so what's uh, something that you that you absolutely can't well I, I shouldn't say this you just don't like it when people do it are you asking me what I can't stand because the list is well, long yeah, I mean, and no, we so need another four hours something very specific as far as what you see a lot that yes you just can't stand I can't stand this okay that, and I mean and I've me usually personally I don't even use it so I usually mention this in class and we know that Cody uh, has a uh, question up there uh, let me talk about this and we'll get to Cody's question. Okay. I'm not trying to ignore it. We're just, we're in the flow and there's not very often in this podcast. We get into a flow. flow. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. So, uh, there's the thing on your gun It's called a slide Stop. lock. Stop lock. Lock. Yeah. The same thing. Yep. That is industry standard, right? That's industry lingo. And what is that button for? So, it, okay, it's very commonly misconceived. It is, but what, it's, what is slide release? Yeah, what is it supposed to be used for, though? It's supposed to be used to lock the slide back. It, you lock it back with it, and it catches the slide when you're out of ammo, and the slide needs to lock back, yes. hence slide lock. Yes. Okay. People refer to it as a slide release. Yes. Hit, hit your slide release. That is... Will it release the slide? Yes, it will release the slide. If it's a new gun, it can be very stiff and very hard to release the slide. Very much so. Why is that? People ask me, will this loosen up over time? And I say, well, I, it may be, but it's not really, it doesn't matter. And they look right. at me. Why doesn't it matter? Because you're not supposed to be releasing the freaking slide with that. It's right. not a slide release. It's a slide stop or like a I slide said, lock. I never use it. I mean, I'll use it at the gun counter. If I'm, you know, if the magazine's out, I'll open the gun up, show it to the customer whatever i'll use it then but when i'm shooting and i reload i do not use that yeah i pull the slide back and let go so that is a little button and you're trying to like look for that freaking button now i've heard i've heard two i've heard two veins of thought on this okay i've heard the fact that do what you want and i guess i'm kind of of that it irks me but i'm kind of of that thought too do what you want just be consistent with it and be safe with it be safe with it and be consistent with it so if you are in a self-defense scenario, right? You shoot your gun and you, and you've got a, something happens and the slide locks back. You have to reload. You got to release the slide. Know what you're doing, right? So and if, when I say, yeah, go ahead. Know what you're doing. And if you always hit the slide lock to release the gun, not slide release, don't call it a freaking slide release. I hate that. <laughs> um, then that's what you need to do repeatedly. If you roll your hand up, grab the slide, rip it back and sling it forward, then that's what you need to do. You have to train for it. Yeah. I would prefer that people grab the slide with their hand and release it that way. Pull it back, rip your hand off, let it sling forward. Tap, rack, bang. Rack that slide, rack exactly. that slide, Tap rack that rack, slide. Yep. And the reason why I prefer people do that is because under stress, that goes as a gross muscle movement, right? The little fine things that you're trying to do, that you're trying to find that button with your freaking thumb. The you know A lot of them are really stiff guns can tend to be kind of small. They're really stiff. I look over there and I see, uh, you know, older people, older students over there trying to, oh, push it. Well, then you get the smaller guns that are even worse. Yeah, they're whole freaking horrible. Then you look at that stupid, that stupid SIG, that stupid SIG uh, P365 SAS. with the SAS with sights the on it, everything. with the shave down everything. You can't, you, I don't yeah. think I'd get a pocket knife in there to release that. And yeah. you got people over there trying to use their fingers to grab that little shave down yeah. Uh, slide lock. So uh, you see it. I, I hate it. I'm sure you see it out here. I see it at the gun counter they're, where uh, they're, they're struggling with it. it. They don't know what else to do. So they'll move both hands over there and push with both thumbs yeah. or they'll just switch the gun to the other hand, which I know is another pet peeve. Oh hers. gosh. And then they're Especially trying to pull loaded. on it and push on it. And their hand is sticking right in the middle of the, you know, the chambering area. Oh yeah. yeah. So when it does oh, that release, hurts. Guess what? It's going to pinch your hand. And it's going to hurt, too. Yeah. So I, I have a story about that. I was demo. Oh, man. This is going to be horrible. I uh, was. De- 
I can't, I don't act stuff happens, right? I was in the classroom. I'm in a private class, by the way. I was, I was showing how a gun functions and works. And I was showing them how to release the kind of uh, how to release the slide to a certain extent. I was showing them some different things. I reached my hand over it because I was trying to be safe with the firearm. Keep it pointed. It was unloaded, right? You always want to keep it pointed in a safe direction. I couldn't use a dummy gun because I actually needed to show how the controls all worked. I had my freaking pinky in there. <laughs> And I released that freaking oh, slide no. and it pinched a hole. Holy, the gun was hanging off my freaking pinky, dude. Ouch. It hurt so bad. I bet. And the lady, the students were sitting there. There was like two of them. They're like, <gasps> and I'm like, that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. So no, anyhow, that's my faux pas, right? It, 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 it happens. Well, and you're, you're on, you're spot on. Like when they're doing stuff and they're fiddling with it, they can't get it. They're frustrated. They're struggling. Oh, yeah. They're just. And next thing you know, guess where they're pointing the gun? Oh, they, they aim that gun every yeah. so, everywhere that they don't need to. And the other to. thing I see is they're like, well, I don't have a good enough grip on it, so I'm going to stick my finger in the trigger and just squeeze the shit out of it. And the next oh, thing yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. If, they, if they do rack that slide, bang, if you got a, you know, if uh, you're, if you got a loaded magazine, yeah, there I you go. S- I forgot what gun was it the other day. I saw someone in class that, ah, what gun was that? It was some kind. It was some kind of revolver, and I can't remember. Can't remember. Anyhow, but they were trying to. They were. So, oh, this is another thing that irks me. Do not count your shots. That is an unreliable way to do it. If you load seven and you think you loaded six, but you get your count off, and all of a sudden you fire six rounds and you think you're done, and yeah. in your mind you're just sure that gun is unloaded. Every time I see someone do that, they're like, well, that's six rounds, and they set the gun down. I'm like, okay, we don't know if that gun is unloaded. Yeah, I only loaded six. It's a slide just didn't lock back. And sometimes that happens, that happens if, yeah. if you're riding if you're grip high, the yeah, slide lock, yeah. right? Um, and I'll say, pick it up. Pick it up. Drop the magazine. Rack that slide. It racked the slide. What pops out? Yep, a live, a live, live round. round. Yep. A live round. And their eyes get real big, and I'm like, that's why... If it doesn't log itself back, you never set this gun on the table unless the magazine is out and the slide is locked back. You have to just assume if the slide is forward, you have to assume that that gun is loaded. We had a lady, I can't remember what caliber it was, but she had it was a revolver she was messing with. And it was a, it was a six shot. And she swore she shot six rounds. Mm-hmm. And she had she was manually, she's an older lady, right? So she was going single action. And she's cock Bang, cock, bang. Did that five times. She thought it was six. And on the on the last one where she she pulled it back and she goes, oh, ah, I've already shot my six rounds. And I'm like, no, you haven't. No, nope, not And she goes, well, I'm going to. And she's she's like starting to fumble with the trigger and the, the revolver's not being held like it should anymore. Oh, and yeah. she reaches up for the hammer at the same time to release the hammer. I'm like, oh, stop, 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 stop. And she, she froze and I'm like, Give me that. <laughs> I reached over very gently and like, I was like, place it in my hands. <laughs> because at this point, it was like a Smith and Wesson and it's got a super light trigger, oh, right? Yeah. So you're like wanting to cradle this thing like a baby. I'm trying to get it from, because I don't think she was, she's a great lady, but I don't think she was quite strong enough to be able to hold the trigger, pull the hammer back and let everything, ease everything forward. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I'm like, I'm literally, I'm like, I put my my hands, place it in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just place it flat, and I get it, and I'm able to. I'm able to, you know, let everything off like it should have been. I'm like, Whew, that was a freaking close one. We're not overly dramatic here at Patriot Defense. No, by the way. It's just, no. Yeah. Occasionally, <laughs> randomly in class, I'll walk up to you and I'll go, "Place your gun in my hands." <laughs> it's kind of Shakespearean. I want to. I want to inspect it. <laughs> so, anyhow. Wow. I know it's one of those things, man. We see them all. You see, you, you see it all, and people. Some people just don't know, and that's fine. They're here to learn, right? But you've got to learn as an instructor. You can't startle them either, right? Well, that's correct, and I mean that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. Then guess what? They're they're gonna flinch or something, and yeah, I've yeah. seen I've seen guys. Uh, we do this drill. And maybe I've talked about it here uh, a little bit before, and and maybe not. I know I talk about it in my classes, right? Because I always tell when we get to a point where you start telling stories. And there's rules. I start talking about the rules, safety rules, what we do when we're on the range, things that I require in my class, how we do things, all kinds of stuff. 
and I start saying, we need to do this. I don't want you to do this. And people always laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, it's yeah, funny. It's funny, but it's it funny and you can laugh, yeah. but uh, this has all happened. And we're not just saying happened in the gun world. This has happened in my class. Yeah. I had one guy, um, he was shooting a 45. Um, I, I almost remember what kind of gun it was too. I think it was some kind of Beretta 45, one of the weird ones, the fat ones. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Like the, uh, you know, how they have like the nano and they have the, right. you know, that kind of body yeah. shape or whatever. Anyhow, he had one of those and we do this drill where you have to shoot twice and then you rest for a second. So it, you come up and it's, it, it's all works on like quick target site acquisition, right. right? So you bring up the site to hit the paper, double tap, bang, bang, come down. And when we say come down, we're just lowering your arms yeah. a you know, little bit. I, and I always make sure that people don't go beyond the table. Yeah. Like if you go beyond the table, you're coming down way too much. By the way, there's a hole in the table. One of them. Are you serious? Oh, no. <laughs> That's another story for another okay, day. Anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, not to discredit myself or anything. It was a ballistics gel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. There was a fly. Never, never mind. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so you lower it down, come up. So it's two, rest two. This camera rest. does not keep up. So it's two, rest two, rest two, rest one. I can't watch that. It's making me sick. Yeah. Okay. And you're just supposed to come down. I looked over and I, I specifically said, just bring the gun down, right? So uh, I'm going to move the microphone for a minute. So I saw a guy over there. He's taking two shots, and he was taking his resting shot. And guess what he was doing with that 45? He was going two, bang, bang, rest. Sticking it right up in his. He was so sticking it right under his see, chin. Yeah, sticking it right up into his the chin. The barrel was under his chin. He was almost resting yeah. his chin on the barrel of his yeah, 45. Bring the gun down is different than bring the gun up. And he had very poor trigger discipline. discipline yeah and i turned around and i saw that and i was like <gasps> Dude, that's you do not want to see that in class right yeah oh no and so i headed over there ah, juju. i headed over there and i was gonna like kind of put my hand on his shoulder or just tight to tap him right mm-hmm. i looked over there and he's still resting with it and his fingers on the trigger i'm like probably best not to startle this one right so i had to wait for him to extend it back out and then i i caught him you know and i said hey look this is and i i try not to be you got to be serious, but you don't want to scare because on right. it's a bad thing that he did. Well, you don't want to embarrass him in front but of But you don't want to embarrass him. Do but he's yeah. he's learning, right? Right. And That's so I said, "Hey, look, do you uh, let, you know, let me tell you what you were doing." And he did not realize what he was doing. He and he honestly he did. Right. He wasn't thinking about it, and he himself he he took a time out on his own. Uh-huh. And, you know, I think that's what was going on with that lady at the gun counter. Right. She wasn't realizing what she was actually doing. Right. So um, I just I just moved out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. No, I get it. But I mean, so is it at the gun counter? Just like being an instructor, I see a lot of things just like you see a lot of things yeah. and people don't think. But that shows me, too, that if you are getting into firearms and you're brand new, you need to go put time behind the trigger. Right. You need to go and, you know, shooting is muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, practicing those gun safety skills. Honestly, it's muscle memory. Right. Every time you pick up a, a gun, whether it be a real gun, a Nerf gun, a you know, one of those water little gun. water things hooked yeah. onto the hose. Where do you, yeah. you drill cordless drill? Where does your finger go? Yeah, my finger goes anywhere but the trigger. Right. Well, I have I have great drill, just, you know, drill trigger discipline. Yeah, and so that's where it goes because you continually use that. You continually practice that and develop it and turn it into muscle memory. So, yeah. you know, God bless the the new shooters. You know, I love them, and and we've all started somewhere, but we need to. That's the thing. Be I always say serious that. with them, but we need to be yeah. patient with them as well, right? Mm-hmm. They need to know the seriousness of what they're doing. I've had a few times where I've had to take someone and go up and talk to them and say, hey, look, I've talked to you about the finger on the trigger a few times. We've really, and I'm not, I don't lecture him. I don't, right. I don't, I said, but we have really got to keep your finger off that trigger. Yeah. Something bad's going to happen. I'm going to feel bad. You're going to feel really bad. Someone could get hurt. Right. And he's like, I know, I'm so sorry. And they, you know, and then and they're usually better after that. Mm-hmm. But instead of just finger off the trigger, you got to almost look at them and say, this is really serious, right? I've never had anyone in class that's been goofing around per se. I, I right. mean, I, luckily I've not come across that at all. But I have had some people that really got to kind of have a stern Serious, I won't say stern, serious conversation with. Right. You know, some people are really prone to, they shoot and they bring that gun back and they point it at their neighbor. Well, and yeah, and in the moment they may, you know, 
you may have said one one thing to them or said said it to them once, and they they're still in that moment where they may not realize what you right. said. So yeah, I mean, there are times that you need to reiterate and just emphasize on that. You well, know? and you got to understand it as an instructor, you can be as understanding as you possibly can, but. You know, if you're standing there and you're watching someone shoot, maybe they have their new, they're having a little bit of trouble, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna that's gonna affect them, right? That's gonna make them nervous. They're gonna get flustered. They're yeah. gonna get frustrated. Yes, definitely. And and you just gotta you gotta have that nice kind of calm, soothing type voice to a certain extent. Let them know it's serious, but you gotta know that you standing there is gonna bother them a little bit as well. Yeah. So, I did have an incident that I haven't had happen in class for a long time happen today. There was a lady, she was with her husband. They were both pretty new shooters, right? She was, mm -hmm. he had shot a little bit before. She, I don't think she'd ever shot. She had a brand new uh, SIG P365, okay? And he had a brand new um, uh, Hellcat. Okay. And in fact, he's coming. Two of the most popular guns yeah, on the market. Yeah, he's right coming now. back. I'm going to actually shoot that Hellcat. Okay. I got to get, I got to get a little trigger time on that because I, so I can prove why I, why I actually hate it as much as I do. Cause okay. I really do hate that. Freaking I do too. I'm not I really that. hate it, but I got to, I got to put some live rounds through it. Okay. Anyhow, she, um, was a little nervous. I said, Hey, look, so we had like 50 people in the class today and we divided it up seven and eight. Okay. And so her group was group one and there's seven people shooting and she was, acting a little kind of a little nervous so i said hey just wait just wait we'll let everyone else shoot and then when they're done with the drill i'll stand up here and i'll, I'll walk you through it i've done that before you've seen me do that before right, yeah. you've done that before right and um so that's what i was going to do but i noticed that when people started shooting she was flinch she wasn't even shooting she's just the noise mm -hmm. she was flinching hardcore right just yeah. it was really bothered she kept kind of like backing away and uh and so um Everyone else got, got got done shooting, so we loaded her gun. She took one shot with her gun. And a SIG P365 is a good gun. It's got a yeah. little bit of a bark to her. A little bit. And so it really it jumped, and she's like, <gasps> and she, I think she she was almost in tears to a certain right. extent, right? I think she wanted to be there, but she was just more yeah. worried her and more scared than what she thought she would be. She took one shot, and I was like, this is not going to happen, for mm -hmm. this this is not going to happen for her today um so i grabbed the gun from her i took it from her unloaded it cleared it and i said hey i told the rest of say hey, you guys just freaking talk amongst yourself for for a minute brought her back up into the into the grass into the yard where i could chat with her and she's going to come back later on this week and we're going to do the shooting portion uh her husband finished shooting today and uh, she's going to come back with her husband and we're going to finish the shooting portion later on in the week and i don't Good. mind doing that for students yeah some people a class is not a good setting, right? They want one-on-one. -on -one, they right. need one-on-one. -on -one, they're too nervous about everything. And Absolutely. I don't scare people in my class, but after you sit through the class and you hear st the stories and you hear the safety rules, your mind's probably going 5,000 miles an hour going, wow, this stuff really happens? Why do we have these rules, right. you know? And so she's pretty nervous and pretty upset, but hopefully she'll, I'm pretty sure she'll come back this week. She's, she's already paid, so I'm right. sure she will. And we can get it figured out. I don't know that that SIG P365 is going to be the gun for her. It's just it's going to take time behind the trigger. I mean, I think so. I think she, to be honest with you, need to start on a bigger gun. I no no no, I do that too. But I think she is going to be the perfect candidate, the perfect candidate for my airsoft. Okay. Yeah. Because with that airsoft, I've talked about it before, and it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal training it tool. It really is. Absolutely. I'm not even loading, and I know I've talked about it, people are probably sick of this, but I am I'm dead serious about this. The more I use it, the more I am convinced. Why haven't I been using this for the last seven years? Right. Right. Because I thought it was just a toy. I really did think it was just but it is a tra it is a training tool. I mean that that is awesome. Yeah. So I don't even load the BBs in it. I I load the mag with the gas, right? Right. And so they can stand inside and they can squeeze that trigger, and that gun will make a little not enough that you need hearing protection, right? But it's gonna have a little bit of recoil. It's gonna have a little bit of a pop. That slide's gonna move. Get you used to the feel and the it, trigger and everything. It is the perfect in between, in between gun for. Uh, to get you to the actual live rounds. I, yeah, from, from not having ever done it before to live shooting, yeah. Absolutely. I know that I've mentioned this on the last podcast, but we had another lady that was um, a little upset by shooting, a little scared, right? 
Um, and every time she did that, the first one, she would just, <gasps> you could just see her just flinch. She flinched like mad. Mm-hmm. And then every time she'd pull the trigger, you could just see a little bit of it, like a little bit of it just leave. You could see her eyes getting a little brighter. She started to calm down. She started to smile. She started to have a good time. And then we went out on the range. And it was kind of like starting over again to a certain extent, but it wasn't as bad. She squeezed the trigger on a on a live round. And and it was a little louder, right? She had ear pro in and eye pro. It was a little louder. And it has a little more recoil. And she was, but not as much. She was right. startled, but not as much as she would have been. And then you watched her kind of just decompress every shot she took mm-hmm. until, man, this is fun. I want to bring my daughter back for another class. I mean, it was just, it's amazing. That's just an amazing tool. I mean, it really is. I can't give it enough praise, to be honest with you. I think it's going to save a lot of people. It Mm -hmm. really is. Because as much as I tout the praise of the the Smith & Wesson 380 EZ, because that's a fine gun to shoot. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Absolutely. But still, that's a little much for some people. They just It's just too much. It's like overload. Right. You got to ease them into it. This is this is going to be a freaking lifesaver. Did I need to buy three of them? Probably not, but I did. But, you know, it, I like to spend money. I, I'll say it. But it is, it is going to be a lifesaver for sure. It really, really is. I'm... I'm pretty excited to use it when this lady comes. And we're going to, we're going to, she only took one, one shot with the other gun. Okay. So we're going to stop. Yeah. And she's coming in and we're going to, I'm going to ease her into this. I think it's, I think it's ideal. Cause I mean, she'd got a small taste of what yeah. you know, it is. And that's, that's plenty. Yes. To, to build off of. Cause then you just need to work from there. Yeah. And then you'll work back up to that. Yeah. So I think it's good to, to, you know, start there and then go back and work all your way back to that. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. Start over before she gets any bad. Back to the starting line. And I really, one of these days, I really need to go out. I need to buy a. Uh, I really need to buy a twenty-two pistol. I really do. Well, like the Taurus TX twenty-two. I, I dude, there was like freaking three of those in class really? today. <laughs> so I really need to get a Tia Taurus, which probably I'm not going to find one ever. I know a guy. You got one you'll sell? <laughs> no, I'm not selling it. Damn you it! Can borrow it, but I'm not. Selling uh, you know what? <laughs> uh, how how hard is twenty-two ammo to find? Uh, it's getting to be. Uh, it's getting to be rough. Yeah, we've got we've got like one kind, one box, three hundred and twenty five round pack, but we've got lots of it. I tell you what, but everything else is sold out. I I may actually take you up on that mark if you'll loan that to me, yeah. and I th- should have enough rounds here for her. But I think that that would be, and e- I think that would be a better path for I'll her to go. Probably clean it before I. Okay. Because it probably needs to be clean. Yeah, no. I, that that I think way it'll, it'll work before, you know. That's going to be a, that's gonna be a way better path, I think, than that 365 right now. Yeah. I think she's going to work her way up there. Definitely. But it's going to take her a little longer than with the average yeah. Joe. Because that gun, I mean, we've talked about it before. That thing is a smooth shooting gun. Oh, it's fantastic it's like gun. Shooting it's it, fantastic. So. In fact, it's uh, a couple of the gals took, uh, that took private classes from me came back today, and uh, their dad had went out and bought them. He's a big gun guy. Uh-huh. Uh, he's great. He went out and they they had the, these little nineteen eleven style like Browning like three eighties, oh, yeah. and those things were horrible. Oh, like the black labels. They were yeah, yeah. just freaking horrible. They look like little tiny nineteen elevens. Right, black, they were, Browning black labels. Yeah. They were horrible, horrible. I can't say enough <laughs> crap about them. And um, so went out, took my recommendations because they used the three eighty easy. Bought them each a three eighty easy, and they got, also each got a TX twenty two. Nice. Taurus TX-22, fantastic. And they had so much fun with their Taurus TX-22s today. They don't think they pulled their freaking 380 Easies out of their bag oh, even. Oh, yeah, they're fun. They had a lot of fun shooting those Tauruses. Yeah, that's just a fun gun to shoot. I mean, I love shooting it, even though I've got lots of nines that I usually shoot. Yeah. I'll always get that Taurus out. Yeah, I need a good 22 pistol. You know, the one that has been filling the void, but I don't think it'll work for this lady because it's really loud. The one that's been filling the void for a lot of people... My freaking PMR thirty. Oh yeah, I think it's that's fun a, to that's shoot. That's a loud gun. It's allowed, but it's accurate. Oh my yeah, gosh, is yeah. it accurate? So yeah, definitely. It's kind of space agey too. It's kind of weird. It looking. is weird looking. So we had a question up here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cody. Um, Cody, uh, thanks for waiting. I don't even know if he's still watching. He says, "I haven't been able to get an answer out of the libs. How do they plan to defend themselves with no police and no guns?" I don't know that they do. Well, well, well let's, so, let's go yeah. ahead. I know, um, I know several police departments have refused to work the, the DNC, 
the, the you know Democratic National Convention. Yes, um, because they're so much behind the defend or defund the police. Um, I'm more of the defend the police, but um, yeah. So if you're going to defund the police, you really expect them to watch your back at a, at a you know convention or a rally or something? Yeah, I so wouldn't. Really, I think that this question is null and void because you know what we know it's we know that they don't plan to defend themselves. No. With no police and no guns, because look about look at as it was, it was it Chaz, what they called that place over in Seattle, and yeah. they, so yeah, Chop or Chaz, or whatever. Whatever. So they didn't want they didn't want firearms, right? They didn't want to do all this. Guess what they did? As soon as they took that thing over and created the land of Chaz, what they do? Like two days in, they started passing out firearms. Yep. Building, they building don't walls and passing out firearms. They they're building walls and passing out firearms. They don't care. They want firearms. They don't want us to have firearms. They really they really don't care. But if you're like Bloomberg, I mean, he's got a whole team of people. I was gonna say, there. if you're money, if you're the, a money lib, a rich lib, you don't care. You don't want us to have firearms, but you are gonna make us so your so your security guards have them. Exactly. Just like uh, Camila Harris or whatever Camilla. freaking Cam Camila. Um, we just got, I just got a text. You going live? Uh, we've, I'm sorry. You keep, keep talking here. Yeah, we've yeah. been live. We are live. Uh, it's going on 56 for minutes, or 40, 15 seconds now. Almost an hour yeah, now. Almost an hour. So, no, I, I truly believe that, um, the police in this country are feeling, um, they're feeling let down. They're feeling, they are, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? They're they're just they're I think they're more disappointed in the American people that are actually supporting this defund the police. Right. Thing. I mean, is there certain things that the police need? I probably not, maybe not, but you know what? They're there to serve and protect, you know, make sure that you know, your your homes are not getting broken into. They're they're there for you, but when you betray them, they're not going to be there for you. And I don't blame right. them. I honestly don't blame them. So can we do this? Can we, let's, let's talk, you know, this is Tarver's idea. Uh, well, I will not say his idea. Just kind of one of some of his thoughts. And I actually can kind of get behind this. Okay. I'm not defund the police. I'm not anti-law enforcement, but I will get out there and state, guess what? I question everything. That's the way I live my life, people. Yeah. I que And you've seen it, right? How you've known me for a handful of years now. You know me to be fair, right? Yeah. I try to think things through. Um, I know we don't agree on absolutely everything. Yeah, but you try and get the most information you can get before you make your decision. Yeah, that's what I go with. So I'm going to say, don't defund the police. Um, are there good? Are there good police? Uh, is, if I say, let me ask this: If I say cops, is that rude? No. Should I say law enforcement? I don't think so. I think okay. everybody knows. I mean, it's a generality. Everybody knows what you're talking. Okay, about. Okay, I don't want to be disrespectful, right? right? So I don't. I'm not saying that, you know. There's good cops. There is good cops, and there's some bad cops too. And I think sometimes. Coming from my libertarian mindset, I do think law enforcement has a lot of power and they can, okay, before anyone jumps down my throat, they can get away with a lot of things. I look at like, for example, our local police. Uh, thanks, Bethany. I did too. It was great. Um, I, I want to... Uh, I want to say that so locally, we'll just talk about local because that's all I know. We have the sheriff's department for the mm -hmm. county and you have the city PD. Mm -hmm. Why can't we, this is my suggestion, we get rid of the city, PD, and we just go sheriff's department. We can make the sheriff's department a little bit bigger. And, and so let me, let, me, let me tell you why. So you have an elected, an elected official. You have the sheriff running the show. He's an elected official. You can put him in, vote in who you want, and you can yank him out. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. People have voted him in. Right. So he has to answer to a certain extent. And then you have the police, the city police, which that's just a job, right? That's just a rank. They don't, he's, he's not voted in, correct? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. Do, do you see what I'm saying, yeah, though? Seeing. So from the chief and yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get rid of the city and just make the sheriff's tournament bigger because they're the ones that we vote. Does that make sense? I mean, is that. I get where you're going. What's the flaw in but that? Is there a the, flaw in that? The reason why there is two separate entities is because of the funding from the state and you know, cities get funding, but we can fix, counties we get could, funding. We, they, we, could, we could do something. We could fix that. Absolutely. The cities if, pay if funding. Everybody would agree with it. Yeah, if everyone could agree, the cities could pay funding into the county right. for the sheriff's department. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to cause waves here. Right. I'm I'm really, really not. I'm just 
If anything, I would say it might. These are my thoughts. These are Tarver's thoughts. Right. If anything, I would say that you got you've got two different. Um, I want to I want to call them sections of just the county alone. You've got the um, um, the detention side of it, you know, with the jail and everything like right. that, and then you've got the the actual policing, the road right. part of it. Um, so that alone is two separate deals in itself. I mean, they're both county, right. but. Um, but if you could funnel that money, you could help out with all that. True, to to a certain extent. I mean, but that's the problem is with your city gov- or your your state government divvying up everything into you know, right. county, city, whatever. There's certain groups that are getting this and certain right. groups that are getting and that. And obviously we'd have to, if, if they ever did that, which I don't think they're going to take my right. little suggestion by any means, right? They're not going to, they don't, no one freaking cares what I say. But uh, it's just my thoughts. If they decided to do that, I'm sure they could figure out something to where the funding for the city now all of a sudden went to the went to the yeah. sheriff. Did you see what I'm saying? Which, and in some cases, I mean, you're, we're talking Twin Falls City, Twin Falls County. Um, but I'm I'm thinking like in certain cases, rural areas like um, Murtaugh or something like that. They don't necessarily have a city, you know. Um, no, but you have your range deputies. Yeah. So, there, but that's where the county would would step in for those smaller rural areas. Um, even they already even, do. Even in Buell or like Castle Filer, Ford. Yeah, Castle Ford. Um, to some degree, even in Buell and Filer and Kimberly and stuff like that, who have their own police forces, um, the county still steps in and helps a lot with those. Smaller, you know, rural so it would be an easy flow into it's it is, but um, yeah, it, it, in larger cities, um, you know, I can see why there is a it's its own entity, it's it's its own department, right? Um, so because the county, I mean, but do you see what I understand what you're saying? Yeah, but I know what you're. Do you see what I'm getting wanna, at? It's yeah, you want to merge it all together and have the like one giant. I want account of I want accountability, right? And when you vote a sheriff in. That's to a certain extent, hopefully. I mean, we've got a lot of people in that don't do us right. Yeah. But when you vote it in, then the people are having a say. Does, right. does no, that definitely. make sense? Yeah. And that's kind of that's kind of what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. I'm anyhow. That's just my thoughts. Don't. I'm not trying to. I don't need. You're, I, I think co- you're going to cause more dissension in with between not necessarily departments, but within the departments. But there's already so, dissension. I'm sure there is, but <laughs> it's going to be more. It's going to be you know worse because uh, I mean Twin Falls. Let's say the chief of police. Um, you know, then we're right now where Carter and uh, Kingsbury are working together, you know, I mean, yes, they're two separate entities, but they work together pretty well. But couldn't you have, yeah, I, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, you're I'm, right. I'm gonna, I get what you're saying. I am going to come back with everything. I'm not trying to pick a fight with you. I'm just, I see, I don't know how it, how it could really work. Right. Right. But even you could have Carter and he'd be, this is a bad choice of words. He could be the King. And then you have, what's what's under there what's under there what's so under? The, the president the vice president let's go that way. yeah yeah so we're president <laughs> <laughs> we got president vice president right okay uh or president vice president of sales president vice president of so president vice president of city okay they all answer to this guy right and you got him and you got vice president of the range deputies but then you've got so you've got the problem which lies where most of the money is going to be funneled into the city, like the major city, Twin Falls City, right? So there's going to be more. Um, but you're just going to have to vote on someone who can know how to disseminate to, to, all so that. So, yeah, you want to divvy it all up. Right. Like, correctly. You don't want to put, right. like, all of your force in Castleford when majority of it needs to be in Twin Falls Castle City. Castleford's cool, man. There's a lot going on out there. Occasionally a yeah. cow gets out or yeah, something. Yeah, and a cat, you know, ran across the road last night. <laughs> But anyhow, I mean, I, I see, but that, that's just, how did we get on this? I don't know. What happened? What happened? How, yeah. did, how did, go figure a podcast went <laughs> off the rails. How, how does that happen? Oh, it always happens. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is, this is the PDPC. I mean, come on. The what? The Patriot, the Patriot Defense, Defense Pod- Podcast. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm not I'm bad with acronyms. I really am bad with acronyms. Yeah. But anyhow, that's just my thoughts on that. But so that's hopefully an answer to, uh, to the question. I don't know if we answered it. I don't know if we answered it or just ruined. I don't know. Cody's probably like, what? He probably, (laughs) he got tired of waiting. He's probably long gone. Yeah. Magnum has arrived. All right. State and country state and county. Oh, well, 
Bethany throws in a good mix there. So now all of a sudden we got the state police we have to freaking worry about too. Now the state police already is the, if you want to go with the president, I mean, they're, they're kind of the main, but you barely, you know, <sighs> because every, all the officers have to pass the post certification, which is a state thing. So Bethany just threw another ranch into the freaking plan here. Yeah. And I got to rehash this. I'm going to be up all night. I know I'm going to be up all night. That's Re- a major undertaking for one person to be. I'm doing it for by everything. the next podcast. I'm going to have a flow chart. <laughs> I've been, I'm going to build a nice flow oh chart. Boy. You get your, get your, uh, get Triggs crayons and stuff. I am <laughs> going, I am going to have positions gone. I'm going to, I'm just everything. Yeah. High quality 1911s. 200, you know how long it would take to get high quality tra- 1911s firearms training? It'd take a lot longer than 200 hours. 200 hours? I mean, look, think of all the reloading. What, eight rounds at a time? No. You'd, <laughs> you'd have, you know, 198 hours just on how to clear jams. Too much tequila. Well, I'd, you- I'd probably throw in like a 33 happy stick. I'd get that 200 yeah. hours firearm training. I'd get a lot of rounds through it. There you go. <laughs> uh, Bethany, sorry, too much tequila. Oh, she's having a good night over there. We have some hand sanitizer at the store that, that is like some really crappy hey. tequila that I used to drink back in college years, you know. Kombucha. Yeah. This says right on it. If you leave it out in the heat, then it may turn to alcohol. Yeah, it makes your guts hot. Maybe I've been keeping this in my pickup truck. We don't know. Oh, my gosh. Actually, that's, I've never had. That's why we derailed. I've never, I, I've never had a drink in my life. Not even a sip. I promise you. Okay. I no, swear cool. swear on the Bible. Maybe I, we should. I've, yeah. Dude, maybe I, should, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Take, the Bibles that are burning in Portland? Okay, we're yeah. not going to get into that. Maybe I should take a couple of shots and do the podcast. What do you think? Do, do kombucha shot. Here we go. No, we're talking... Oh, alky, alky? Just see what happens. Um, no. We yeah, lose all our fancy it. sponsorships. We lose all our fancy sponsorships that we don't have. I'm going to call you out. You're too chicken to do it. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't Great. want you to do it. If you're, if you're on that long track of not having one, then don't do it now. I'm going to, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to, never mind. We don't even get, we don't even go down that road. So anything else we need to touch on today, sir? I think we actually did a pretty good job today. If I don't say so, if I say so myself. I don't know. I don't remember anything that happened today. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Perfect. We could, it'll be surprised when you re-listen. That's right. I'm going to listen. And I'm going to be like, why were we talking about that again? I will say that, uh, it's, it's getting closer. We got a little, little ways yet. We're getting closer to fall. We're getting closer to my favorite time to conceal carry again. fall. And I'm thinking that as soon as it cools down just a little bit more, I think we all need to get back over here and do some more shooting. It's just been so time. freaking hot. I need range time. So, oh, this is another thing I've talked about doing. A listener shoot. Nice. I don't know how I do it. I don't know what I do. And I'm not sure when I do it. But I'm thinking a listener shoot. What do you think? A meet, greet, and shoot. Yeah. Meet and greet and shoot. Yeah. Something like that. I want to meet and greet and shoot. I want to greet your meet and shoot. I want to. No, yeah. don't, don't invite Kamala though. <laughs> Kamala's, Kamala's coming. Yeah. And we're going to make it a 1911 free zone. Yeah. No 1911s allowed. That's right. Anywhere. <laughs> unless it's, premises. unless we need it to prop the door open or something. Ooh, look yeah, at that. We could hammer some nails into. Some, I might even bust hammer out some staples into the, into the, I might even bust out the yeet cannon for the shoot. Oh gosh, please. No, <laughs> I've been, I got my Dremel tool out the other day and started to do a little trigger work on that sucker. Oh my gosh. It's looking nice. It's really looking yeah, nice. Really fine piece of machinery. It is. There. Anyhow, uh, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. We appreciate you guys, uh, watching the live feed. We, we do appreciate it. I know that the podcast kind of, it takes left turns. It takes right turns. Sometimes it flows well. Sometimes, sometimes not like so much. And maybe that's why people tune in. It's just a surprise to see what the hell is going to happen this episode. But we do appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everyone commenting on it. Um, if you do like it, share it with your family. Share it with your friends. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, make sure they subscribe to it, right? Um, and you can find us. If you you know, if you want to listen to this again, you don't want to watch it on Facebook. As the audio is a bit better i think on on the podcast version of it but you can find it under the patreon no class did you say <laughs> uh you can uh, find the podcast uh it's called the patriot defense podcast on itunes on stitcher on spotify on well I, all kinds of places any place you can find a podcast you could probably find the patriot defense podcast 
A PDPC. That's right. Look for it. Subscribe to it. Share it with your friends. We surely appreciate it. If you got any comments, you want to say anything, you want to ask me questions, you can call me. What other podcast, let me put this, what other podcast host gives out his personal cell phone number? Anybody? Crickets? No. Okay. I don't know that button. I don't forget. No, that's fine. No, crickets is fine. So, yeah, nobody, nobody does this, right? So I'm giving you out my personal cell phone number. Call me. Text me, area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. We'd love to hear feedback, questions, say hi, say, hey, look, I'm I'm listening from over here in this state or this country. We've actually got people from overseas that listen to us. Any Aussies? Yeah, a couple. All right, cool. A couple of them. Kangaroos. So do that. Share it with your friends. And I tell you what, um, uh, we, like I said, I mentioned before, we have partnered up with the USCC, uh, USCCA, excuse me, that's the United States Concealed Carry Association. And I've actually got signed up for their insurance, and I know um, uh, you've talked about it or thought about it, right? And it's a pretty good deal. Uh, check it out. If you want to know uh, more information or if you want to sign up, we have partnered up with them. Okay. Uh, it's not a sponsorship, but it's a partnership. You can actually go to our website, uh, my website. It's called PatriotDefense13.com. That's PatriotDefense13.com. You can look for it on the rotating banner at the top. You can click on it, check it out, see if it's for you. Uh, it'll show you all the pros and cons. And if you want to sign up, if you would decide that it's for you and you want to sign up, you can do so at that link. That would be fine. We get a slight, I get a slud, the podcast, Patriot Defense gets a slight kickback from it and it helps us, I don't know, upgrade our, our microphones and, and do a little stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. right now this is pretty much free, right? I mean, we, it's not, we don't make money on this. You know, we've got a, a, a little chunk of change put into some of this equipment here, and we, you know, we can always upgrade to make the podcast sound better. So I'll push that a little bit. And if you don't, if you decide it's not for you, that's fine. Just keep listening to the podcast. That's at the very least. That's what we like. Listen to the podcast. You can grab the podcast link and you can share it on your social media. That would be of great benefit to us. It's just how we're going to grow. It's how we're going to get bigger. It's how I can, you know, Mark likes to see the numbers go up. When he sees the numbers go up, he shows up for a couple episodes. I, do. I, I, I come. Yeah, if yeah. they hold stagnant, he's like, I'm freaking, I'm not interested yeah. anymore. I'm going to go eat some cheeseburgers. You guys are on your own. That's right. Cheese and burgers. Mm. <laughs> Anyhow. So there you go. Uh, and we will be back. I plan on being back next week. I don't know if it'll be Saturday or not. I've got a, like a 37 person class. And so I'm not thinking, I think I'm going to be tired after that. I'm thinking maybe we'll do it on a Sunday. I, I haven't freaking decided yet, but we'll be back next weekend. Uh, and like I said, uh, share it with your family, share it with your friends. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and get out and try to get some uh, range time in. We'll see you guys next week.